Okay, so we're continuing on with this Bible study in John chapter 4. We're going to start with verse 7. A woman came out of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink, because his disciples had gone away into the city so that they could get food. Then the Samaritan woman said to him, How do you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, being a Samaritan woman? Because Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, and who is the one saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would give you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no, you have no vessel, and the well is deep. Because he didn't have a water pitcher. From where then do you have living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well, and he and his sons and his livestock drank out of it? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone drinking from this water will be thirsty again, but whoever may drink of the water that I will give him will never ever thirst, but the water which I will give to him will become a fountain of water in him, springing up into everlasting life. There's another place where he said something similar, and I think it was in John. And I think it was John that in, um, said he was talking about the Holy Spirit. Um, the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, so that I will not be thirsty or come here to get water. Um, yeah, because the Holy Spirit is the, the life-giving one, like, he leads you how to help people, and he's, the gifts of the Spirit is like word of knowledge, I, I've seen people that do so much healing out of word of knowledge, and like, discerning of spirits, I've seen how people can, uh, help with deliverance and emotional healing and stuff by being able to discern. There's just, the Holy Spirit brings so many gifts that bring so much life to people and eternal life to other people. Like people get saved when they get healed. They get saved when they get delivered because they want Jesus because they see how good he is. So the Holy Spirit is super important for bringing life. Anyway, Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come here. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You say, Well, I have no husband, because you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. You have spoken this truly. <laughs> I like how he sandwiches the harsh thing in between two compliments. You spoke well, and you spoke truly. Um, the woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this, in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where it is necessary to worship. Um, so Jesus had a w word of knowledge, and then she was like, Oh, I see you're a prophet, and I have this, this question about spiritual things. So, I don't know if she was changing the subject or she just really had this burning question that she's like, oh, this guy knows the answer. <laughs> um, maybe both. Jesus said to her, woman, believe me that an hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem. Interesting that he calls him the Father because I don't think that was a normal way to refer to God back in, in his time. He came to show us. He came to show us God's heart as a father. That was the name that he came to reveal to us, that God is our father, because he came to restore that intimacy and that closeness and that uh, living under grace, under God's favor, under his goodness as a, as a child of God. It says in Romans that we have not received the spirit of slavery again to fear, but we've received the spirit of adoption or sonship by which we cry, Abba, Father. So it's the Holy Spirit. He is the one that gives us that, that gift of sonship, of that, the spirit of 
truth of being children of God and having that close relationship with God, that he's our father. Um, so he said, you will worship the father neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know because salvation is coming from the Jews. But an hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Because the Father also is looking for ones like this to worship him. God is a spirit and the ones worshiping him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called Christ. When that one comes, he will announce to us all things. I think she was kind of thinking and wondering if he was the promised one that had been prophesied to that he would come and save them from their sins. For it, it had been the prophecies were since the beginning, since the Garden of Eden, when God told when they first fell, God said the first prophecy about the Messiah. And so she's wondering about this and Jesus said to her I am the one speaking to you so he answered her question yes and that I am is the name of God and he said it from time to time and it seemed to be a really powerful utterance whenever he would say it <laughs> um, and and on this his disciples came and marveled that he was speaking with a woman however no one said, What do you seek, or why do you speak with her? Then the woman left her water pot and went away into the city and said to the men, Come see a man who told me all things that I've ever done. Is this one not the Christ? That's like we talked about before. Christ is the English for the Greek word Christos, which is the Greek word for the Hebrew word Mashiach which we call Messiah. It all means the same thing, anointed one. So the one that God has chosen and put his spirit on to do this particular thing of rescuing people from the curse of the law, from their sins, and everything like that. Um... Okay, so therefore they went out of the city and came to him. But in the meantime, his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you don't know about. Then the disciples said to each other, No one brought him food to eat, did they? Jesus said to them, My food is that I should do the will of the one who sent me, do the desire of the one who sent me, the purpose of him, and that I may finish his work. Do not do you not say it is yet four months and the harvest comes? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields because they are already white to harvest, and the one reaping receives a reward and gathers fruit to everlasting life, so that both the one planting and the one harvesting may rejoice together. For in this the word is true that one is the one planting and another the one harvesting i sent you to harvest what you have not labored over others have labored and you have entered into their labor and many of the samaritans out of that city believed into him because of the word of the woman testifying he told me everything i ever did then as the samaritans came to him they asked him to remain with them and he remained there two days and many more believed through his word and they said to the woman we no longer believe just because of what you said, because we ourselves have heard, and we know that this one is truly the Savior of the world, the Christ. So there's a couple things in here that I think are really awesome. One is that this woman was possibly the first evangelist that Jesus ever sent out to tell people about himself. He specifically went out of his way to find this woman she was the one out of the whole village that he went to find to tell everyone about himself. And she had been divorced five times and now she was someone's mistress. And she, so she was with someone else's husband. And I can, <laughs> you know, sometimes 
you can understand that because, she, you know, if you've been in a marriage and you've seen maybe him cheat on you or whatever and you feel like the guy loves the mistress more than the wife and then after she had been the wife five times, she's like, this is old. I'm going to be the one that gets loved. <laughs> so she became the mistress. But, you know, she was looking to be loved and... Jesus, they sometimes I've heard people say that Jesus was the seventh man, and she finally found love, but it wasn't, you know, it was it was God's love. So, um, but I just think it's awesome that he chose her, you know. She was the one that he went out to meet, and she was the one that went and told people about Jesus, and led her whole city to Jesus. <laughs> So, um, yeah, there's just, and then the Samaritans also was a despised race by the Jews, and yet they recognized that who he was when a lot of the Jews refused to recognize that. So there's something about being the lost, the last, and the least, <laughs> as Pastor Prince says. He says, if you don't understand grace, you won't understand the parables because they're all about the lost, the last, and the least. There's something about that where God chooses the weak things to confound the strong and the foolish things to confound the wise. Like it says in um, it's a Second Corinthians 1, I think. <laughs> it's either Second Corinthians or First Corinthians. Anyway, that not many of you were called as being wise or strong or great or whatever, but God chooses the despised things and the things that are not to bring to nothing the things that are. And I love that about God, that he's kind of upside down to our way of thinking um, in the world, but he chooses the foolish things to confound the wise. So this story is a good example. She was a social outcast among her own people, coming to draw water at noon when no one else would be there in the heat of the day. And she had this past like this where she couldn't find love. And God, Jesus chose her to go tell people about himself and to bring her whole city to him. And he went out of his way to go to this city of people that his own people despised. There was this racism going on between his people and her people, but they recognized him as the Messiah. The whole city recognized him as the, as the Messiah, like unanimously when so many people of Jesus's people refused to, to see that. They were too wise, they were too learned, and the Pharisees said, you know, uh, this people are cursed, they don't know the law, but yet so many of these unlearned people were the ones that recognized who Jesus was when the Pharisees refused to because they were so, they had this idolatry of they worshipped the law and they didn't care about God's heart. They didn't care about God's feelings or God's desires at all. They just worshipped the law and that's why Jesus was always taking a stick and poking their sacred cow, you know, the Sabbath or whatever. I mean, he was doing it because he, that's what he saw the Father doing, but I'm just saying, like, you know, poking at their idolatry to point it out to them. <laughs> so, <clears throat> yeah, I'm running out of time. Um, oh, and also that he found, like, he felt refreshed because she took from him, like, she took life she took you know and they all came and they took life and he was like my food is to do the the work of my father and that is to give to pour out his love on these people that they will know jesus that they will know you know the salvation that the savior of the world so all right well i hope this helps and uh, until next time god bless you mm -hmm.